If you are anything like me, you love going fast. Nothing beats the feeling of just letting go of the brakes, the wind whipping past your face, and the sound of the tires roaring as they grip the ground. And that is what this next section is all about. This should be a pretty quick build and I hope to have it finished in a day. Wrong, it is way bigger than you think, dude. Let me show you on the map where we're at. This far section is right here and it comes straight after the berm and lily pad I built in the previous episode. You land back on the old trail and actually rip along this long right hand bend. It's already so fun to ride, but the trail's a little bit narrow, a bit dusty, and it's been chewed up by the mini excavator. The biggest issue, however, is drainage. We need to get the water to cross the trail so that it doesn't pool on the inside. To do that, I'm gonna build a high-speed roller in the middle. That should add a bit of spice to the trail as well. You know the drill. Let's start by clearing the work area. This tool is a Rayco, also known as a McLeod. It is a must have when building trails. It makes it so easy to chop through and move dirt. The drainage ditch is in place, half the roller is built. I'm gonna start taking dirt from this mount here to fill in the back side of it. But first, check out this. I'm thinking if I widen the trail here, that will allow you to turn in tighter and take a different line over the roller. Which means I could probably shape a jump out of this mound and then use the side of the hill as a hipped landing. That way I can have my fast cruising section, but then there's also a jump for anyone that wants a bit of air time. All right, the ground's a lot harder than I thought it was. So I'm gonna try and use a mini excavator, save my back a little bit. The cutout jump's actually shaped up pretty nicely. The roller, however, is a bit bigger than I wanted. So I'm taking that dirt from the top of it, sifting it down, and I'll use this to shape the edges of it. I don't want it too wet, just wet enough that it clumps together. So I said I was going to use the dirt to shape the edge of the berm, but I realized I still have to drive the mini digger over it, which will absolutely destroy it. So I'm going to use that new mix to shape the lip. That is looking awesome. Now it's time to work on the landing. I think I'm going to have to build it up a little bit, but I'll start by clearing the leaves and we'll just see what we've got. I've cleared it up and you can see that we've got a bit of an angle that we're working with. So I'm thinking I should be able to get the mini excavator and lower this section of trail, which will then steepen this side slope. The dirt that I pull from here, I'll actually be able to build up the landing even bigger. The landing starts to take shape, but once again, I have underestimated the amount of dirt required for such a thing. So I'll be ruining my roller once again by driving the mini excavator over the top of it, parking it here, and then I'll be getting dirt from this pile here. The Global Cut Lab shop is open. Buy a shirt to help support the channel or stick around to the very end of the video for your chance to win one. It's the following morning and I've absolutely destroyed the run-in but the landing is looking pretty good. I'm gonna use this remaining dirt to build a catchment berm. That way, when you hit this as a hip, you won't go launching off the trail. How good is this looking? We've got the high speed roller just so smooth, waiting to be torn up. And then we've got the bonus hip. Who doesn't love a good side hip? And check out the landing. It's a bit steeper, a bit taller, and a bit longer for shredders. And did you notice this warped section at the start? That's for people that aren't as comfortable jumping hips. It means you can go a little bit slower and start by hitting it straight, and then slowly build up as your confidence grows. Let's get my bike and give it a test ride. All right, let's do this. That was terrible and I didn't even make the corner. That was a little bit sketchy. Pretty sketchy. 
I'll hit it a few more times to see if I can improve. Alright, honestly, I'm pretty bummed out by this. It's just not working how I imagined it. I know my technique's pretty average, but I feel like it's a bigger problem than just that. You can't hit it as a left hit because there's a right hand bend just after it, which means that your weight's thrown all off. Right now, I'm gonna test high speed roller. Hopefully that cheers me up a little bit and we can come back to this. Please work, please work, please work, please work. Oh yeah, now we're cooking. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm so stoked. The high speed roller is working. I don't have to change a thing. It's so fast and that was the whole point of this episode. You absolutely rip over the top of it, which is awesome because I got this crazy idea for the next feature that will use absolutely all of that speed. I, like, you won't be able to guess what it is. Now back to this. The kicker feels great, but the landing feels crap. Like it feels really flat. And that's because it is. It would feel much better if you could actually hit it like a hip and angle yourself down the landing but there just isn't enough catchment for that. I'd have to build up a much bigger berm and that's just gonna take way too much dirt. So I've got a couple of other ideas on how I can fix it, but if you guys have some suggestions, let me know in the comments, that would be super helpful. Cheers for watching guys. And if this was your first episode, definitely click this playlist where I build some of my favorite features so far. They usually work out way better than this one. This episode's t-shirt winner is Johnny the G. He's also got his own mountain bike YouTube channel, so check that out. If you wanna win a t-shirt in the next episode, make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. See you then.